Um, before I get into this, I was thinking last year when the guy that made my logo, he also sent me uh, other drawings at the same time, and they're amazing. So I, what I was thinking I would do is do a t-shirt, mug, whatever, like now, and then wait a couple of months and then do another one and then wait a couple of months and just kind of spread them out through the year. And what I want to do is show you the pictures that he drew that will be that merch. And I'll insert them here. And then what I'll do is, I'll probably put a poll on the community tab. So if you're subscribed to the channel, you can go to the community tab on my channel and vote for which one you like that you want me to do first. I'll let y'all have a say in which one goes first. How about that? They're pretty cool, aren't they? I wish I could tell you his name. He wishes to remain anonymous. So I don't know when you'll be watching this and look at the date on the video. And if it's 2020, then one of those shirts, <laughs> uh, merch, whatever, is available. Just check the description for this video and you'll have the link to it. So first, let me explain, because there's a lot of confusion about ibotenic acid and muscimol. And people think they're just these random drugs that just do random things. So I want to explain to you how they work and the fight or flight system. So the fight or flight mechanism is a very deep and important mechanism for our survival, right? And it's been the way that it is for millions of years. And it's made to, it, it's sort of a spectrum and it's made to help us stay calm and patient and to be able to think and use our entire brain and our cortex and to be able to think logically and critically and to problem solve and stuff like that. But if there's a threat, then what happens, the chemicals that keep us in that state of mind, then that whole mechanism will switch. And pretty much the opposite of that happens in fight or flight. And what happens in fight or flight is blood is pulled from our gut and sent to the extremities. So that means things that are not important for defending or running kind of get shut down and, and aren't as important. We have to put our energy and our reserves into what's important in that moment to either fight for our survival or to run. And so that means digestion isn't important and that gets shut down and the blood goes to our arms and our legs so that we can perform that function. Also, you know how if something extremely stressful happens and you feel like you acted without thinking and you do heroic things or you do things that are surprising that you didn't know you had the power to do, that is because that the same thing happens in the brain. So blood is taken from our thinking cortex and put into just the minimal sur survival parts of the brain so that we can do what we instinctively know we need to do to protect ourselves. So that means your thinking, your logic thinking, your, your critical thinking, your ability to mull things over, be creative, and engage in, in discussion and think something through, obviously we get in the way. So Access to all of that goes away, and what you're left with is survival thinking, and that's the fight or flight response. And so the two sides of this mushroom function with that entire system, and it's using 
your acetylcholine, your gamma amino, amino butyric acid, epinephrine, norepinephrine. These are all very important neurotransmitters and chemicals that are responsible for that whole fight or flight thing. So that's obviously going to be your the up chemicals, the up side. And that's what ibotenic acid does. It moves into that system and locks up and links up with all of the things necessary to create that scenario, but in a, in a different way. It's not, okay, so the first video I made where I ate raw Amanita, you know how I was very honed in and I could just see things? Well, it's sort of the same thing. There's not all this thinking that gets in the way. You're just honed in on solving the problem, and that's that's the fight or flight thing. The fight or flight mechanism is hone in. It's tunnel vision. It's hone in on the problem, solve the problem. Boom, boom, boom. Well, we want to create that for people with ADD, for people that have parts of their brain that, that don't fully wake up and get engaged. And so, Drugs that are meant to help with ADD, however they work, they sort of cause that tunnel vision and help with that. And ibotenic acid, it seemed to me when I ate raw amanita, had all those possibilities for that. I'm not dumping the idea that it still does, and I'll tell you why I think that it still does, but why I think it's not for me. But I don't want to get off topic. So it would make sense that it does because it uses those, those chemical pathways in the body. So it would make sense if ibotenic acid would create a, a scenario of fight or flight without the fear. Just a sense of work, energy, and clear focus. And you watch the video of me eating raw amanita and you'll see that. And then the other side of this mushroom then is the muscimol and it uses this exact same system and then it turns everything down brings your the blood and all the energy and, and systems back to functioning normally your digestion gets back to normal and just growing hair and maintaining your cells and things that you do every day not being full of anxiety or restlessness and the ability to think critically, be at peace, be creative. So if you think about this mushroom in that way, that we exist with this balancing act of states of being, then it will make a lot more sense to you how I'm thinking this mushroom is working based on the research and the chemicals and everything that it uses. So it would make sense that I'm getting the results I get when I use it. Now, one of the things that I had issues with before I got on clonopin were muscle spasms. And remember, if we're talking about the fight or flight, then you're sending not only blood to the extremities, but you're ramping up the nervous system in that area so that all of your electrolytes, like sodium and potassium, and magnesium, things like that. You burn a lot of those moving nerve impulses. Your nervous system uses those to help create the nerve impulse. So if your body is in fight or flight and it's hijacked that entire cascade of neurotransmitters to cause this, well, you're also using adrenaline and you know things that come off of the adrenal glands, corticosteroids, all this stuff goes into play. And if you're not though, if you're not in a fight or flight position in your life, you're just being threatened by overwhelmed by the modern world and by life and by worry and money and jobs and stuff, then you've got all this energy at the ready. You've got all these nerve impulses and blood at the ready and it's on high and your nerves are just ramping up and ramping up and ramping up enough of that. And they're just going to start causing contractions of your muscles. And I lived in that state long enough that I lived in a constant state of muscle spasms in my back. And they got so painful that I couldn't sleep. And I got on muscle relaxers, you know, and temporary painkillers and all that stuff to try to help with it. 
It wasn't treating the problem. And as a side note, with autism, there are some studies that are hinting that we have a problem with magnesium and calcium and minerals and processing them and keeping enough of them in our blood and available for use. So while I probably had way too many of them available for the nerves, I also didn't have enough of, of some of them. So a lack of magnesium can also cause muscle spasm. So that and among many, many, many other reasons, I got on clonopin because I just couldn't live in sheer panic anymore. And clonopin uses those neurotransmitter pathways. It hijacks the gamma amino butyric acid, norepinephrine, epinephrine, acetylcholine, all those things to help shut all that down. But it's not perfect and it made me stupid and I still didn't have access to my brain. I couldn't think. And I lived like that for 10 years and you can see my story. I won't rehash that. So it would make sense then that when the study, the research shows that muscimol does the same thing, only it's the natural version, that it's going to do it in a healthy way. It, it, I mean, it did for me. It did it in a really healthy way. I had access to my brain. I had the energy. I could think. I felt like a normal person again. But, you know, then there's that ibotenic acid side of things. So I wanted you to understand how the fight or flight system works so that you can understand the roles that ibotenic acid and muscimol, at least what they're doing physiologically, and then for you as you're using this mushroom, seeing how it's playing out in your life. Because like I say in the dosing videos, this is a lot. These are a lot of neurotransmitters and chemicals and corticosteroids and adrenaline and your electrolytes. It's just so much involved in this process that when we already have such different brains, some people have a really high IQ brain, some people have an autism brain, and some people have a neurotypical brain that's a type A personality and a neurotypical brain that's, you know, the type B personality, and it's in the, in the ADD brain. And, and all of these chemicals will affect all of us differently because of that. But it seems to me muscimol if it works for you, tends to do a lot of the same things for most people. But when it comes to ibotenic acid, I'm beginning to think that it's going to treat different brains differently. Thanks for coming and playing with me again. And uh, go vote on the community tab for which picture you like that you want me to make available first. It's not a commitment to buy any damn thing. I just want everyone's opinion because I know which one is my favorite and I want to see what y'all pick. So I'm happy the holidays are over. It was great and it was fun, but it was overwhelming and it's happy to, I'm happy to be back in my body, back in my mind, back in a place of love and peace and happiness and joy and behind the camera again and talking to you guys. Give me feedback. In the comments, I love your feedback in this community. Find me on Instagram because that's my playground and that's where I love to go upload whatever suits my fancy. I try to keep it mushroom related, but sometimes the cats get in there. So thanks y'all for playing with me again. <laughs> okay, I'm going to shut up now. And I love you beautiful people. Bye.